The movie begins with a beggar moving through a busy market, asking for some money. He's asking a shopkeeper to spare some change for him, but the man refuses and sends him away. Then a man named Little John walks into the shop and gives the shopkeeper a small piece of gold and asks him to cash it in for him. The shopkeeper tells him the small amount of gold he's brought is worth nothing, but Little John manages to convince him and the shopkeeper exchanges it for two coins. Little John leaves happily, but bumps into another man outside. They almost get into a fight, but the stranger tells him that he's a courier. He tells him that he has a letter and a package for him, from his uncle. He takes the letter and hands it to the shopkeeper, and asks him to read it for him, as Little John's unable to. In the letter, his uncle tells him that he'd managed to sell his property, and he'd sent his share of the profits along with the letter. When he unwraps the package, he finds a gold brick inside. Little John asks the shopkeeper to cash it in. My man's a baller. The shopkeeper goes to weigh the bricks and discovers it's over a thousand grams, which is about $59,000. He decides to keep that knowledge to himself and lies to Little John, telling him the brick barely weighs anything. He then tells him that he's only willing to exchange 120 coins for it. Little John agrees to it, feeling good about the money he received. He leaves happily without counting the coins. As he leaves, the shopkeeper starts laughing and tells his father that he's managed to con a man. His father then wants to see the gold brick. The shopkeeper goes back and brings it out to show him. To his horror, his father points out that the brick is fake, so they quickly go to find Little John. During this time, the beggar that the shopkeeper had turned away that morning can be seen hiding outside the shop and overhears everything. In the next scene, the father and son, together with some gangsters, confront Little John about the fake gold, but he denies cheating him. Soon, a fight breaks out with both parties taking hits from each other. Hearing the commotion, a police inspector enters the restaurant. He confronts both parties and starts to investigate the issue. Little John tells the inspector he was paid 120 coins for his gold brick and even shows the inspector the receipt he had received from the shopkeeper. Little John then decides to show the inspector his bag of coins, but when he empties the bag, one of the coins breaks and he realizes the coins are fake. He starts crying and starts apologizing to his uncle for losing all the money. Upon saying this, the inspector calls the father-son duo scammers and orders them to pay little John again, but this time with real money or he'll arrest them. Having no choice, they do so. However, after the incident, little John and the courier, called Big John, meet up. Turns out the two were actually brothers and were the true scammers the entire time. They start splitting their earnings, coin by coin. While splitting the money, Little John throws a coin further than usual and distracts his brother. During that time, he grabs a handful of coins and puts them in his bag. After the entire transaction, Big John notices that his bag looks much smaller and is asking Little John about the difference, but he claims that the bags are equal. Who's this guy kidding? Not believing his crafty accomplice, Big John's asking to exchange bags. However, since Little John knows they're not equal, he snatches the bag up before his brother can grab it. Soon, the two of them get into a fight, leaving the bag with lesser coins behind. As they continue fighting, the bag with more coins escapes their possession and lands in the woods. During this time, the beggar from before takes the fallen money and leaves. The brothers quickly head into the woods and try to find the bag of coins, but are unable to. So they immediately run back to try and take the bag with lesser coins, realizing they have lesser money to split between them. They decide to go gamble the remaining coins to earn back their loss. When the brothers arrive at the casino, they place their bets, with the coins still inside the bag, and start winning. But before the duo can win any more money, the owner's asking them to empty the coins from the bag to ensure its legitimacy. However, the two are shocked when they see metal discs instead of money. The owner accuses them of scamming them, and another fight breaks out, with the two Johns thrown out in the end. With no money to buy food anymore, they decide to steal some fish to eat. Big John comes up with the idea of dipping his hand into a fish seller's barrel and hiding some fish in his sleeves. My man's living in 2030. They manage to steal the fish successfully. Next, they go to a restaurant and ask the chef to cook their stolen fish. Big John's asking his brother how they're going to pay for the other ingredients. Little John tells him that they're going to go sell their family's heirloom ring. But Big John refuses to do so. So Little John comes up with another idea. 
He suggests that they hide the ring in an old man's luggage and then accuse him of stealing it to get free food and money. Little John successfully hides the ring, while Big John goes to call an inspector. The inspector is asking Big John to open the old man's bag to prove his crime. However, the ring isn't in there. The policeman then beats up on Big John and warns him that if he wrongfully accuses somebody again, he'll have to use force against him. A confused Big John informs his brother the ring is missing, and they soon come to the conclusion that the old man stole their heirloom. After the old man leaves, the brothers go to confront him. They start being violent towards him, but the old man knows Kung Fu and easily takes him down. He then returns the ring back to him and leaves. Wanting revenge, Little John tells Big John that they should go and ask the old man to teach him Kung Fu so that they can learn his secrets and defeat him. They catch up to the Kung Fu master and beg him to teach him how to fight, but he remains firm and refuses to do so. The two go above and beyond by showing off their fighting skills and being human bridges for the old man to walk on, just to show him how much they want to be his students. They then follow the old man to a restaurant and stand at attention next to him as he eats, in order to show their sincerity. The old man takes pity on them and invites them to eat with him. Once they're done eating, he takes the two back to his home and starts teaching him Kung Fu. As the days pass, Big John starts questioning his master's weird training methods, but he soon gets taught a lesson by his master and realizes the ball rolling training has some benefits to it. As months follow, the brothers start improving and begin fighting well. One day, their master tells them that they have improved to the point where they can take down any ordinary man and leaves. Upon hearing their master's praise, crafty little John tells Big John they should use their newly learned skills to earn some money. They make their way to the town and find a group of thugs harassing a woman. With their newfound skills, they easily take the bad guys down and force them to pay the woman and themselves some money for all the trouble they caused. Then the two go to a casino where they begin gambling. Little John's asking his brother to create a distraction so that he can change his bet to win. They soon win a large amount of money. However, the beggar from before sees this and snitches on him to the casino staff. And the staff confronts him and tells him to return the money, but the brothers refuse to, and a fight breaks out again. The two brothers manage to take down everyone and leave with the money, but at this time, the beggar picks their pocket and steals the money. He taunts him, and the two brothers give chase. Outside of the casino, they soon get into a fight with the beggar, but only to find out that he knows Kung Fu too. The beggar manages to beat him and escapes, as the two brothers return back later that night. They find two men waiting at their master's house. When the men ask him where their master is, the brothers tell him that he's away and that they're his students. Upon hearing this, the men challenge both brothers to a fight and take him down. They insult the brothers by saying they're useless without their master and ask him to get their master to fight them. Sometime later, the master returns and the brothers tell him about what happened. He reveals that the men are his sworn enemies and tells the brothers to invite his enemies for a duel. The next day, all the men fight and after exchanges back and forth, the brothers and their master manage to beat their enemies. Their master tells him to go book a table at a restaurant to celebrate while he goes back to change and will join him later. At the restaurant, a man called Tiger approaches the brothers and shows them a poster with a picture of their master on it. Tiger asks if they've seen him before, and the brothers innocently give way their master's address, not knowing this man is another arch enemy of their master. Tiger reaches the master's house, and soon the two of them engage in a violent fight. Meanwhile, Little John tells Big John he's going to go look for their master since it's already been an hour and he still hasn't arrived at the restaurant. When he reaches the master's home, he's shocked to see his master murdering Tiger and hiding his body. At that very moment, Big John also arrives and starts asking his master about Little John's whereabouts. Realizing that Little John might have seen his evil deed, the master attacks Little John after he comes out of hiding. Little John tries to defend himself, but his master's too strong. In order to protect his brother, Big John joins the fight too, but the master overpowers both of them easily. The brothers then realize they're outmatched, and Big John decides to sacrifice himself by grabbing the old man's leg and asking his brother to run for it. Upon seeing Little John escape, the old man murders Big John and chases after Little John. But luckily, Little John manages to get away. At night, Little John takes refuge at a small house. But to his surprise, he sees the beggar cooking chicken in it. 
he decides to take that meal when he's not looking. When the beggar sees, he attacks him and easily overpowers him. The beggar then leaves and goes to sleep with his pet monkey. With nowhere else to go, little John goes back to the beggar's home and sleeps on his floor. In the morning, he hears the beggar training outside. Impressed by his skills, he asks the beggar to train him and starts kneeling down, hoping he would accept him as a student. But before he can kneel, the beggar throws his nuts under him and stops little John and rejects his request. Now, that's something you don't see every day. However, after a little stalking, little John manages to convince the beggar and he begins training him. The next morning, the beggar puts sharp blades behind little John's legs and asks him to practice somersaults with him. Next, he gets little John to dodge attacks while he wears rocks on his feet. The beggar also puts him into an intense jump rope session and teaches him monkey fighting style. Soon, little John becomes more agile and improves in fighting. One day, little John goes to the market for food. He suddenly spots his old master. Little John follows him to a field and starts seeking revenge with his newfound skills. Little John manages to put up a decent fight with his former master. After a few exchanges, little John falls through a window of a restaurant. Here, the beggar, who was getting food, sees this and begins attacking the master together with little John. The duo tries using their secret monkey style of fighting against the master, but is still unable to take him down. The master then throws the beggar out of the window and he lands in the bushes. The beggar then notices that the bushes have thorns and gets an idea. While little John and master are fighting, the beggar uses the thorn-filled plant as a rope and starts attacking him with it. Soon, both little John and the beggar get a hold of the plant and start creating a jump rope system, with little John fighting the master inside it. With his countless hours of training put to use, he manages to take down the master and the beggar does a final body slam on him and finishes him off. The two fighters fall down due to fatigue, and this is when the beggar reveals that he's actually a cop and that the master had murdered his partner and had always wanted to get his revenge. Our movie ends with little John carrying his new master back home. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this recap, please be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video.